Easy, high protein, decent on calories, freezable, and meal prep friendly. The only thing that can make this pizza better is if it also tasted amazing. Oh wait, that's right. This is the best pizza I've ever had. Satisfyingly cheesy, savory, and filling. This is how you can make the best pizza you'll ever eat. It's an incredibly simple recipe. No fancy stand mixers, bread machines, or elusive ingredients. Even if you haven't made bread before, it's hard to mess this up. Sure, you can buy some pre-made stuff from the store, but it won't even come close in terms of texture and flavor. I start with 480 grams of bread flour, roughly four cups. From my extensive testing of this recipe, um, I eat it a lot. This much flour leaves the dough more on the sticky side, so adding a bit more flour later on is no problem. 9 to 10 grams of salt, or roughly 1.5 teaspoons, and mix to combine. 320 grams of water, roughly 1.5 cups. This I microwave for 40 to 45 seconds, or until just warm enough to feel cozy to my fingers, but not unbearably hot. The little yeast babies I'm going to add to this would be killed if the water is too hot. Because I don't cook with refined sugar, I'm using honey to give the yeast an extra metabolic kick. Add as much as you'd like here. Sometimes I add more if I want a sweeter crust. About a tablespoon or two will do just fine. And stir. It doesn't really matter what brand of yeast you use, so long as it's the active dry stuff. This is the brand I have this time around. One sachet or packet, or the equivalent two and one quarter teaspoons, about three grams, of active dry yeast goes straight into the honey water mixture. Normally I do this step before I weigh out my dry ingredients, so by the time the yeast has had a chance to activate, I'm ready to combine everything. I tried my best to save on calories in making a pizza dough by not adding any oil, but I found out the hard way that you actually need oil in order to make pizza crust taste like pizza crust. Without it, it just tastes like bread. So it turns out the extra calories are worth it. Two tablespoons or 30 milliliters does the trick. I add that right into the yeast mixture before merging the wets with the dries and mix. Again, nothing fancy here, just a large spoon and eventually my hands. Once a shaggy, sticky dough starts to form, I spoon out the blob and blobettes onto the counter. It's kneading time. Add a bit of flour to start, press, fold, press, fold. If I feel the dough wanting to engulf my fingers, sticky boy, I just add a bit more flour, then press, fold, and repeat. My goal here is to knead the dough to the point where it no longer wants to eat my hand, but has a slight tackiness to it, and it is satiny smooth with a nice bit of elasticity. This dough is actually the brainchild of months of internet research and many failed attempts to recreate the best pizza crust I've ever had. Dewey's Pizza, local to the Cincinnati, Ohio area, is by far the crispiest, lightest crust I've ever had the pleasure of experiencing. It has a slight sweetness and a yeasty, wide open crumb. While no oven-baked pizza crust can match the crispiness of Dewey's oven-fired pies, my recipe manages to tick all the other boxes while offering a satisfactorily crispy crust. Tacky, satin smooth, and firm but elastic, my dough baby is ready for a rise. Back into its crib it goes, and I cover with plastic wrap, leaving on the counter for two straight hours. For an even yeastier tasting dough with a far more open and airy crust, I let this sit on the counter for one hour, then throw it in the fridge to cold ferment for one to two days, and pull it out about an hour before I want to make my pizza. I didn't want to bother with the logistics of all that for this video, so you only get to see the two hour version. While the dough baby is fast tracking its way into kindergarten, I'm going to make a quick and super simple pizza sauce. For years, every red sauce that I've made for spaghetti, pizza, or anything Italian starts out like this. One 15 ounce can of tomato sauce added to a pan on medium heat. Tomato paste helps to thicken and smooth out the texture of the sauce. One tablespoon of that. And now for the spices. Three quarters of a teaspoon or roughly four grams of salt, one teaspoon or roughly two grams of garlic powder, one teaspoon or two grams of onion powder, one teaspoon or a half a gram of basil, and about a half a teaspoon or 0.25 grams of oregano, half a teaspoon or one gram of black pepper, a pinch of red pepper flakes for a bit of spice if you prefer. I stir to combine and let simmer to thicken and infuse the spices and herbs. After the sauce is thickened to a good consistency, I transfer it to a glass container or bowl to cool. And that's it. No long cook time, there's nothing fancy, just some dried herbs and spices, quickly heated in tomato sauce. This rich red sauce makes any carby vessel I cover it with taste heavenly. Four large pizzas is how much this batch is good for, and since the dough I'm making only yields two large pizzas, the rest of this will go into the freezer for an even easier pizza night in the future. 
Pizza wouldn't be pizza without mozzarella. A block of low moisture, part skin will do just fine for my purposes as it's lower in calories than full fat without sacrificing much texture or flavor. However, if you've got room in your caloric budget for whole fat mozzarella, knock yourself out. I'm looking to get about a half a pound or 225 grams out of this. Let's check on our child. It's been about an hour and you can see he's probably about halfway through preschool. One more hour and he'll be ready to start learning some basic geometry. In the meantime, I'm going to set the oven to the highest temp that it can go. For me, that's 525 degrees Fahrenheit or roughly 274 C. And while it may seem excessive, I'm letting my oven preheat for the whole next hour. Because good pizza is crisp pizza and crisp pizza comes from hot ovens. The long preheat time ensures that my oven is thoroughly heated from the air within to the rack that the pizza will be on. A whole two hours has passed and now little Billy Blob here is ready for his first geometry lesson. A crash course on circles. Ah, a fine blob. In it you'll see all the gluten fibers that have formed and the air bubbles poking their way out from between those fibers. All I'm doing here is gently shaping the blob into a more manageable blob and cutting it into two separate balls. One of these I'm setting aside for now, the other I'm cutting in half again to make two quarter billy blobs. Each quarter blob is the perfect size for a personal pizza. You'll see that in a minute. And each half blob is a perfect size for a medium to large pizza, depending on how much you stretch it. I'll start by making a large pizza to better demonstrate the process. Then I'll forget, of course, to press record when I do the toppings. Stretching pizza dough is simple, but a bit tedious when you're first learning. I find it's best to let the weight of the dough and gravity do most of the work for you. Working on the outside rim to start seems to be the best way. I first lightly pinch and pull all around the circumference of the dough circle. Then as the dough starts to thin out, I hang it off of my well-floured knuckles and gently stretch the thicker parts. If it's your first time, take your time with this. What you're looking for for a thin bottom crust is for the dough to pass the window pane test. That is, when held up to the light, the dough should be thin enough to let light shine through it. Spots where light doesn't come through are where you need to work the dough even more. I dust my 16 inch baking sheet with flour and stretch the dough out onto it. Plop down the sauce and the following toppings for a two serving large pizza. 113 grams of shredded mozzarella and 140 grams of cooked chicken breast. Check out this other video to see how I meal prepped that. And bake for roughly 10 minutes or until the crust is clearly cooked and the cheese browned and melty. Since I've failed to record me adding the toppings for the large pizza, here's how I design a small single serving pizza. Oh, at the sauce, 65 grams of cheese and 70 grams of cooked chicken. Believe it or not, that's only 770 calories minus the bacon I'm letting loose tonight and has 47 grams of protein. Of course, you can customize your personal pizza any way you'd like. Probably the best thing about this recipe, though, is that you can meal prep it. This single serving pizza is going into the freezer for me to enjoy another day. To freeze, I just leave it on the pan and put it straight into the freezer like so until it is frozen solid. Then I stick my pizzas in individual plastic bags until I'm ready for a quick late night dinner. The cooking process is the same, by the way. Just take the pizza out of the freezer and throw it into an already preheated oven for about 10 minutes. And voila, my pizza is done. Crisp, cheesy, high in protein, meal preferable, and freezable. How could you go wrong with this pizza recipe? If you give it a try, let me know what you think in the comments below. Peace.